There's and more support around that than than people. I think they realize if I think a lot of adjusters, especially new ones, feel like they're out there just by themselves and they get handed a bunch of work and then they just got to figure it out. But there there is a quite a bit of support. And having and, done and been a field support manager myself, where I would just go and train people like you, you'd, I would just be like, I'd call you and say, "Hey, where are your claims at today? I'm I'm gonna come right along with you." And uh -huh. you know, it's fun. I loved it. I mean, it was like. <clears throat> I don't have responsibility for the claim, <laughs> which was probably right. a big part of it. Um, but I'm also no like writing for you. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I'm, I'm like, we're going to, this is a complex claim. I had a bunch of uh, adjusters in New York on hurricane Sandy. And there was a lot of like 300 year old houses that were slate and like brick and <laughs> these gigantic yeah. trees leaned into the side of the house and crunched everything up. And it's like a four story house and it's all racked and everything. And, the, the adjuster's never done this before. It's like their third inspection, and they're just like, I have no idea what to do. I'm like, well, let's, let's start at the top. Let's just start somewhere, and then we'll just, you know, keep our notes organized, right? And here's the process, and right. and next thing you know, you know, it's done, and they get paid, right? And the homeowner yeah. gets, gets paid, and, and uh, no, it's it's really enjoyable to, to, to do that. I would, you sound like the kind of guy that once, you know, you've got, you know, two or three, four years under your belt, and you'll probably want to maybe do feel support or be a trainer and just not even you know like what? full time, but just like, you know, here and there. Yeah. You know, you know, I, I've actually, I've thought about that a lot too, is, is like, well, where do I just want to do field adjusting? Do I just want to be, you know, writing claims for, I'm, I'm 34. So it's like, I still got a few years under my belt that I can like really put it a lot into this, but yeah, I mean, I, I've definitely thought about those kind of options, like trying to branch out into, you know, where, where can I, where can I work my, what's next? That's sure. Uh, that's always kind of my mentality is like, what is, what's, what's the next step on this adventure? Because right now at this point, I never, I didn't leave the door cracked, by the way. I didn't, I didn't leave for plan B. I didn't leave plan B made this. This was my Burn plan. The ships in the Harbor. Yeah. I, I, because what happened you leave the door cracked open, you're going to definitely bust it open. And oh, yeah, so for sure. I, 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 cl I close that door. And I said, I'm, I'm going to commit to this. My wife and I, we had a great conversation about it. And, and we said, we're going to do this. Yeah. And it's not going to be easy because there's going to be traveling involved. We, it, but we're going to do this because we, yeah. we, we see the potential in being an independent adjuster. Sure. So what would and you it, say it, your biggest struggles are right now? Like, what do you, because you, cause you're at the point now where you like, you're starting to see what, you don't know, right? So you're learning, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, and I have trainings, Mile High, MoCat, Veteran Adjusting School, I mean, all these places, we can tell you everything that we know about how to do this stuff and get you to the door, right? And, right. But you kind of have to take it from there. And you're, there's so many things that we just, it's really hard to like train. It's things you just kind of have to figure out for yourself. <laughs> so where do you think you're at as far as like, what, what do you feel like is hanging you up at this point to, to kind of get yourself to the next level? You know what? I think I think learning speed. I think not necessarily. I, I'm so meticulous with things and mm -hmm. with photos that I think I, that kind of overcomplicates things. It might be more of a personal struggle than maybe something else. I don't know if it's trainable, but is learning the ability to to work through a file a lot quicker. You know, taking sure. it from point A to point B. And, and right now, I'm on an exact deployment, and you know. Doing that switch when I, I my first switch actually was my first deployment was December 26th. I went to Maine and I switched to Exact Man and I I learned pretty quickly like uh, you know I was been on Did core you fly logic. or drive. I flew. <laughs> you kind of have to. That's oh. a that's a three and a half day four day drive right there in the winter time. I lose ya. All right, froze up. There he is. <laughs> Did you hear that? No. What happened? Huge like. A lightning strike. It, I got the update. It hit zero miles within the house. Oh, yeah, really? I'm, I'm curious if it struck the house actually. Oh, because it. I mean, it shook this whole home, and the power went out. Uh huh. It scared the. That's that scared me like crazy. Wow. <laughs> that made me jump real quick. No, you just like. You were start. I said. I asked you if you were flying. If you flew or drove to, drove to Maine, and you go, I flew, and then that was like your face froze right there, and then that was. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this it sounded like 
I mean, that lightning, I got the update on my phone. It said it was zero miles away, but I mean, it shook this house. So anyway, I can't remember exactly what we were talking about, um, but you said Uh, you went to Maine. I I mentioned I went to Maine. Were you talking Um, about process and speed? Yeah, yeah. So um, basically that was my first exact deployment. It was my first exact claim, but where I'm getting 30 exact claims. And yeah, going through that, it just kind of learning. And this is where I met just a really great, another great field manager, the one on one who took a lot of time to kind of help me and walk me through and show me he was, he had just moved from adjuster to field manager. Yeah. And it was, it was really great because I mean, he took, I won't lie, he took hours on the phone with me, team viewing and, and not because I needed that help right there, but he started showing me all the tips and tricks, things I really needed prior probably to going into this deployment yeah and he started showing me all these all these things that exactimate can do and and yeah he worked through it and and that was really really helpful because a lot of times like for example when you dimension elevations on on exactimate like i i really you know i had always done with hover and hover just kind of manually did that but you have still have to assign the uh the elevations on on exactimate like what's what's what and i realized these are these are little things that i was kind of spoiled on core logic on a stability claim because it kind of already did that uh-huh and exactimate it's it's more customizable and you have to you have to some of the things you have to do manually and you have to do by yourself and that that was that was super helpful because he, sh- he showed me all these things that were going to i mean certain carriers require you to dimension the elevations and if you don't do it then that claim's not going anywhere until you do it and it, it was it was and i guess i'm where i'm going with that is is that i found a i keep finding i keep running into field managers and they're out there like crazy that just really care that want to see you do better yeah and that and that's really that's why i just keep falling more and more in love with the industry is because they uh I keep finding people who want to invest in me, but knowing they don't really, I mean, they get a good, they'll get a better adjuster at the end, but they're not getting really anything personally. And that's, that's been, that's been probably one of the most promising parts of this career is that there's so many people out there who care, so many people out there who want to see you be better. If you're a brand new adjuster working for a major IA firm, you will most likely already be covered under a blanket errors and emissions policy. You probably already pay something like five or $10 per claim for this coverage. And what is errors and emissions? Well, if you're accused of messing something up on a claim, your E and O insurance will step in and help you out. But what if you cause damage or injury on a field inspection? For example, your ladder falls down and smashes the insured's brand new Ford F-150 Lightning. Then a general liability policy will cover you in that instance. Again, you likely have a little bit of protection through your IA firm as a newbie adjuster. However, if you've got a year or two under your belt and you make most or all of your annual income from claims work, then you owe it to yourself to upgrade your E&O and general liability coverages to be customized to you. And depending on how many claims you run in a year, there's a very good chance these policies will be cheaper for you with your own coverages. Better and cheaper? Sign me up. There's only one company that provides E&O and general liability solely to the insurance industry, and that is CPLIC, AKA Kaplik. They even have drone and cyber coverages. Download the free guide all about the different kinds of insurance you as the adjuster should carry at cplic.net slash adjuster TV. And with more than 700 videos, there's plenty more to watch here on adjuster TV. Don't know where to start? Just go to my videos page here on YouTube and type in a search term right here to find an answer to almost any question you have about property claims handling. And we'll see you in the next one.